This is Sunday Breakfast. Welcome. I'm um, just gone by a conversation with Reverend Sifas Hewudamati on parenting and the need for responsible and right parenting. He makes an interesting point, really. He says that self esteem over self, self control rather, over self esteem, and calls on parents to make sure their children listen, right? He says, you know, just listen. If you're not even saying anything, <laughs> just listen. Mm -hmm. Now we shift conversations, we focus on health, a very important conversation. You know, early on, Eno told us that we were in the month of um, diabetes awareness, right? So now we are going to have a full-blown conversation. And our co-host for the health <laughs> segment, yeah, you know, at this point, yeah, yeah our co-host. Welcome, Doc. Um, Thank you. Reverend. Hey. <laughs> She just added your title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, pardon me, Dr. Um Kausum Zakaria Adam yes, is, yes. Is, is our co host for this segment. <laughs> um, uh, diabetes. You know, I was telling Edo early on when we were um, about, about starting the, the show, you know, that every time diabetes comes up, the next thing you hear is like sugar, like yeah, sugar, yeah. like that check you. You know, sometimes you're just drinking your Coke, you've not even drunk it in a long time, or like some fizzy drink somewhere. Why There's you? like, hey, with diabetes, <laughs> like, but, but meanwhile, it's just one, you know, in a very long time. So, uh, yeah, maybe you should just start off on that note. Like, yeah. what's the correlation between okay. sugar and, and diabetes. diabetes. Okay. Well, before she answers, let's put mm. the WhatsApp number Very out there. Yeah. 0204 mm. uh, Send in your messages, send in your questions, and we will ask them for you. Alternatively, you can go on our social media platforms, um, hashtag Sunday Breakfast across all Channel One social media platforms, or my handle, Eno underscore S, or Jude's admin, Duncan, Dr. Adams. All right. All right. So maybe to simply put it, our body, um, sugar is the fuel of our body. Mm. Okay. So if you break down the body, the body is, has building blocks. And the building blocks are from your cells, and then your cells now become your tissues when they come together. And then these tissues, a group of tissues, will mm. become an organ. And then the organ would then become organ system, and then you have the human being when you put several organs together, organ systems together. <coughs> now, sugar is something that the body or the cells use. So how the, the cells use these um, sugar to be able to produce energy mm -hmm. for our daily maintenance so our daily we call it metabolism mm. okay so the cells take the sugar and then they use the sugar to maintain something we call homeostasis mm. such that you are kept alive energy is produced the cells are maintained and all of that but when you start, when you take in food, it needs to go through digestion. Mm. And then it is broken down to the smallest um, substance or mm. the smallest unit, mm. which is the sugar, depending on what's, what type of food you're taking. Now, the sugar, once it is within the blood, it needs to, how do the cells get it? So the cells get it by, it's a hormonal system where insulin, Mm. There's insulin production that happens within the pancreas. There's a, an organ within us mm. in our abdomen that's called the pancreas. I, I remember my digestive <laughs> yeah. system. So yeah, yeah, it looks, yeah. And I do remember your digestive system. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that <laughs> insulin, any time mm. there's sugar within the blood stream, mm. insulin is produced. So insulin helps shift the sugar the sugars from the blood into the cells. So that now, once it's intracellular, these cells can then use it mm. to do whatever, the metabolism, to maintain us, you mm. get it. But you have diabetes when there are issues with the insulin production, mm. either the secretion or the action. Mm. So simply put, to define diabetes, it's a group of metabolic diseases, mm. which is characterized by two things. So the two things are hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia means that when you have sugar levels, when I check your sugar, 
sugar levels within your blood very high. So it's characterized by the hyperglycemia and also a defect, <clears throat> a defect in either the secretion of the hormone insulin mm. or the action of the hormone insulin mm -hmm. or a combination of the two. And usually it affects multiple organs and then it also involves multiple substances. And the substances, we can have glucose, we can have protein, fats, fluid and electrolytes. Okay, these are all substances that help us in our body. So fluid and electrolytes, your water regulation, and then oxygen delivery and oxygen um, uptake. Mm. So all of these things become deranged when mm. you have what we call diabetes. Wow. So it's a group of, when you take it from the definition that I have given, metabolic disorder or metabolic disease characterized by the hyperglycemia and the defect in the insulin secretion, okay, or the insulin action or both. Mm. So this will bring us to the common types of diabetes. So I just want to touch on it. Mm. We have the type 1 and then type 2. Yeah. So the type 1 is usually has to do with an autoimmune um, cause. Mm. So autoimmune is cell fighting self. Mm. So the cells within the pancreas, mm. the beta cells that produce the insulin, are being attacked by your own immune system such that it destroys it. So if it destroys it, it means mm. that you don't have the cells there to even produce the insulin for it to act. Mm. Mm. You get it. So usually for the type 1, it happens very early in life. Mm. So sometimes childhood or sometimes even at your early adolescence or early adulthood. Mm. 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 And then you have the type 2. two. Yeah. So the type 2 is the commonest compared to the type 1. The type 2 there are several causes. It's either you have um, the, the organ pancreas itself. It, is, it becomes insensitive mm. to the sugar levels such that it is sluggish in wow. producing the you. insulin. Mm. That's one. Or it's likely that the pancreas is producing the insulin. But once the insulin comes, it is excreted out of the body very quickly such that it is not available mm. at any point in time when it's when it's supposed mm. to be used. Mm. Wow. And then the other thing is that it's likely that the insulin is produced, but as soon as it comes out, there are other hormones within the system that inactivate it. So it's present, but then it can't act. Mm. You get it? So that is the type two. And that's the symptoms are usually, it's, it's gradual and some lifestyle also, uh, mm. I mean, it, it has some lifestyle modifications to or lifestyle uh, changes that need to be done to so that you don't progress to getting the type two diabetes. Wow. You know, so these are the differences <laughs> so between the from type, type one. one to type two. No, you don't move. From, there are two different there are two ones. Two different ones. Mm. Yes. Okay. So the as I said, so type one is autoimmune. Yeah. Okay. So autoimmune, your self is uh, destroying self. Mm. So your, your pancreatic cells are there, but then there's something, maybe some genetic predisposition mm. or something that you have been exposed to, maybe a viral infection that has triggered it. Mm. And then now your, your own immune cells are now destroying mm. the beta cells that, that actually produce the insulin. Mm. Mm. But the type is 2 is the more common one. Pregnant yeah. women? No, that's gestational diabetes. Okay. That's another type of diabetes okay. that also happens because of the hormones that they have mm. at that point in time when uh, they are pregnant. So, so, so you they get are a different sense, It's a types. very broad... Exactly. But you're saying that the type 2 is more common. More common, about 90%. Our, our, in our part of the world... In fact, everywhere. Everywhere. Mm. Wow. everywhere. You know, people often confuse the symptoms and the causes. Yeah. But let's just still stay on the, the broad opening remarks you've given us. So then there's a correlation between um, sugar and diabetes yes then you also get people now try to you know when they see you with a lot of sugary stuff then the <laughs> next thing they want to talk about is you know the possibility of suffering from erectile dysfunction <laughs> i have a guy so i hear that a lot right so yeah, maybe definitely. i'm eating some chocolate somewhere yeah. and it's like hey oh, i didn't know you know <laughs> you, you know it has so, yeah so is that is that is that also a correlation with right, that okay with so erectile dysfunction and Diabetes. diabetes yes definitely mm. because diabetes has a lot of and as i mentioned from a definition mm. 
it affects multiple organs <laughs> with wow. multiple substances. And then your, I mean, the penis <laughs> is one of it. <laughs> you get it. Mm -hmm. So it has to do with um, the signs and symptoms okay. that we we'll delve into, and then the pathophysiology of it. Okay. Pathophysiology. It's having, yes, it's having an effect on the integrity of the blood vessels that um, tend to uh, supply different organs in your mm. body. So once the integrity of the blood vessels mm. are affected, it will definitely have an effect on the overall performance of that particular system or that particular organ mm. in mm. question. So we can talk about signs and symptoms. What are some of the signs and uh, symptoms? Doc, before you before go that. into the signs and symptoms, I just wanted to find out whether between the type one and the type two, is one severe more than the other? Okay, okay. so type one and type two. Mm. So type one, usually the onset is very rapid because mm. of the distraction. So you will see all the signs and symptoms we are going to talk about in that particular patient very rapidly. Right. Uh -huh. As compared to type two, type two is gradual. As I said, is either the beta cells are, have become a little sluggish in knowing that, oh, there's sugar inside the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And I need to produce the insulin so that the insulin can move into areas where it has to be used utilized mm -hmm. right. you get it but it becomes like it's such that there's starvation in the midst of many mm -hmm. in the sense that that's how i, I actually would describe mm -hmm. diabetes mm -hmm. because you have the sugar within the bloodstream mm -hmm. but your cells are suffering right your cells are suffering from starvation mm -hmm. and the reason is that the hormone that needs to push the sugar from the bloodstream mm -hmm. into the cell is either it's not functioning well there's a defect in its action or in its secretion, mm. or actually both you of know, it. Doc, it's, it's, it's interesting because back in school, you know, we didn't do it to a very, you know, <laughs> elaborate level like you have. Yeah. But we're taught that sugar or glucose, as you call it, yeah. was a source of energy for our cells and our tissues. Yes. Right. So how is it now the same thing that can predispose us to a very serious um, yes, disease? Yes, you're like right. That? It's a source of energy. So as I said. Once it is produced mm. and it is within the bloodstream, mm -hmm. so depending, maybe you took carbohydrates, it had to go through a whole lot mm. to be digested to get to the simplest form, which is the glucose. Mm. So you have it within the bloodstream. Mm. But then you can't flood the bloodstream. So once it's within the blood, which is extracellular, mm. you need a hormone, a signal mm. that, okay, there's sugar available. So this sugar that's available, we need to push it into the cells where it can be utilized so it will undergo glycolysis and all to produce the energy you are talking about and then that energy now becomes productive mm -hmm. is either you are using the energy to even i mean muscle action or you are using the energy to help maintain the cells to repair some cells and all of that you get it so it is a source of energy but then you need signals you need hormones and all of these are chemical are chemical reactions that do take place in the body. So once the sugar is within the bloodstream, it needs to go okay. into the cells, okay. where okay. is either, even when it goes into the liver, mm. the, the liver changes it into glycogen and it's stored. Mm. You can have about 400 grams of glycogen stores there. So that in case the times that you are not eating and the body still needs energy or it needs a source of energy, those, um, 400 grams can be mobilized to those either into the bloodstream so that it can be redistributed to those cells that need it. You get it. So it's a whole system, mm -hmm. but once there is some dysregulation in the secretion or the action or both of both of it, um, then it becomes problematic. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then now it can lead to you know the once it is within the blood it becomes problematic because it will cause destruction of the, the pipe. So the blood vessels, I, I would say they are like pipes mm. mm -hmm. that supply different organs. Right. But then there is, they have different um, parts. So the innermost part is called the endothelium or the endothelial cells. And when you have the sugar staying within your blood, it can lead to, it can combine with some proteins that are within your plasma.
So the plasma is a liquid part of your blood. So it can lead to formation of these comple complexes mm -hmm. that we call ages. So mm -hmm. they are called, uh, so these ages, what they do is that they just go and, and sit on basement membranes in different parts of organs. And then they cause different dysfunctions depending on where they are. But the typical signs and symptoms associated with diabetes are, one, you can end up having what we call glycosuria, which, which will end up giving you polyuria. So glycosuria is, <laughs> okay. you see, because you have a lot of sugar inside your yeah. blood, mm -hmm. and then your kidneys, what they do is that they mm -hmm. filter. They filter all the um, waste products, day in and day out, okay? Now, there's a threshold. When that threshold is, it goes beyond that threshold because you don't have that hormone that would help you move the sugars into where they are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It means that a lot of the sugar will now get into the kidneys. Mm. So once you get there and then it overwhelms the threshold of the kidney, mm. it means that you now have sugar being filtered. Normally, you're not supposed to have sugar filtering mm. through your kidneys and mm. coming out of your urine, no. So when I say the glycosuria, it's just a big word saying that you have sugar in your urine. Mm. You get okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so that's basically it. So now you have sugar within your urine. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then this sugar, it will mean that it would suck your water, a lot of your fluids or your water out of you. So mm -hmm. you become dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So when you say polyuria, it means that because there is sugar within the urine, and then it's a sucking more of the fluid out of you. So poly is plenty. So plenty urine. You end up peeing a lot because there's something within your urine that has an osmotic um, uh, mm. pressure. Mm -hmm. That's exert some osmotic pressure to your urine. So then you tend to lose a lot of urine. So a lot of people come and say, hey, I've been peeing a lot of late. You get it. Mm. And that is what we call polyuria. Right. So now... This polyuria, and then you are, you are actually pushing a lot of the fluids into the urine. It means that you become dehydrated. Okay. So if you become dehydrated, the body will quickly notice that ah, this person is dehydrated, and we need to do something about it. So then it will stimulate the brain center, where now it will force you to drink a lot of water. Mm. So that is what we call polydipsia. So polydipsia is you want to, like a lot of, you, you have thirst. So it will, it, will, it will signal the thirst center and then now you tend to drink a lot of water. Mm. But unfortunately, whatever, the problem is there. So you mm. even drinking the water, it will still yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah. You get it. So that is it. And then also because the cells, mm. the, 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 the sugar is just within the blood. Mm. It's not getting into the cells for, for them to do all that they are supposed to be doing. It means that the body again would see that, ah, why? Why is it that we can't get the sugars that we need to produce the energies? Mm -hmm. So it's likely that this person is not eating well or is not eating much. Mm. So you end up with the other symptom that we have, polyphagia, which is to eat a lot. So they tend to eat a lot, even mm. though they'll be losing a lot of weight. <laughs> is it a reverse of um, bulimia? Um, bulimia is basically you eating and then bringing it, bringing out. it out. But this is just eating just more, eating more, but still losing but weight. But you see, when you are eating more, mm. now it will go into the digestive system, mm. it will be broken down, then it will be pushed again into the bloodstream. But it can't get, so that's where I'm saying that, yes, <laughs> starvation in the midst of many. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You get it. So it wow. still comes and then you still have a lot of, so now, it makes sense. The definition makes sense because mm. we said hyperglycemia, which mm. is high blood glucose okay. levels. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're trying. The body is trying as much as possible, thinking that there's some dysfunction somewhere mm -mm. but needs to be um, taken care, care of. of yeah. So it's, it would put you in situations where now you have polyuria, that is a lot of your peeing a lot. So patients will come to you, I've been peeing, I pee a lot of late. And then... Um, sometimes even <laughs> I hear patients saying that maybe when they pee outside, mm. they tend to see some ants yes. around exactly. It's because of the sugar levels wow. that are in there. You get it. And then mm. you end up with the, you having to want to eat mm. a lot, polyphagia. And then the, 
polydipsia as well. So these are some of the three signs and symptoms that patient classically would present with do, diabetes. In, in line of practice, do you, get, come, do you get people come to you say, well, um, they are trying to get diabetes because they want to lose weight, right? Because, you know, there's a whole, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a whole, like, fixation on um, losing uh, weight and how it's a struggle for a lot of people, yeah, right? Yeah. So much that people now resort to all sorts of unconventional yeah. means. No, but diabetes is not something not, you would want to have. <laughs> there are so many ways that you can lose weight. Mm. I mean, so the gastric bypasses here and there and all of that, yeah, they are recommended mm. ways, mm. but not diabetes. Mm. Diabetes is, is the last thing you would want to think about. Mm. You get it. So diabetes is, 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 a, meta, is a metabolic disorder. And it comes with so many complications mm. that you don't want, want to, to be there. Want to it at all. Exactly. What, what's with so, the, the swollen feet and diabetes? Because exactly. every now and then we get people say that, you know, when they see your feet in a certain way, then they are quick to associate it with it. So it, it all boils down to you having some edema. We call it lymphedema. Mm. Or having pedal edema. Mm. So edema has to do with still osmotic pressures mm. so when you have we have extracellular spaces mm. and then we have intracellular spaces mm. intracellular spaces are within the cell mm. and then extracellular space is anything outside the cell mm. anything outside the cell could be that either within the pipes your pipes which are your blood vessels or transcellular spaces mm. so when you have differences in oncotic pressures within these two spaces such that when it goes through the capillary bed mm you don't have enough oncotic pressure within the cells to, oh, okay. sorry, within the blood vessels or extracellular to take out, to, to still take, take over the fluids that are passing through. Mm -hmm. Then it stays more within the cells. So if it stays more within the cells, it means that anytime you, you press, you end up having some mm -hmm. indentation and that is the pedal edema. So it has it has to do with the oncotic pressures here. Do you have any questions? For yeah, and then, I wanted to know what FBS is. Okay, in terms of our glucose levels. Yeah. Okay, so FBS is basically fasting blood sugar, and it's very important mm. in diabetes and then investigating diabetes mm. because our fasting blood sugar. So when you sleep for about eight hours, sometimes six hours, within that period, it's assumed that you have fasted you have rested the body, and there wasn't any food entering within the system. So to be able to tell the exact state of your mm. sugar levels, we recommend that you, your blood is taken and then is checked for the sugar levels first thing in the morning after that fasting period. Mm. So that is what we call the fasting oh, blood okay. sugar. Mm. And this fasting blood sugar, um, at least you should have about, the limit is 5.6 millimoles mm. per liter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you do check it, and then you have um, um, levels of about 5.7 to about, let's say 6.9, mm -hmm. then this is impaired fasting glucose. So that's like pre-diabetes, like a warning sign to you. Mm -hmm. That's, then if, if you do not modify your lifestyle, that's basically with the type two, which is developed later in life. If you do not modify your lifestyle, the likelihood is that wow. you may end up mm. getting into the levels of diabetes, which is seven millimoles per liter and above. Uh, any any so more questions? Numbers are good. So 5.6 and below. 5.6 5.6 and below. Right. Look, I have enough. a question here for you mm -hmm. from a viewer. It wants to find out, um, my eyes get irritation now. I feel a lot of fatigue and my mood has been change often a lot. Um, I read somewhere that it could be a sign of diabetes. Uh, myself, my sugar level, I checked it recently and it was slightly above normal. Could you find out from Doc what this could mean? Okay, so it's, if it's above normal. The message is from Juliana. Yes, okay. Juliana. So if it's mm. above normal, I just gave the ranges. Mm. If it was fasting, mm. there's sometimes that you may end up doing a random blood mm. sugar, which is not, I mean, we don't recommend, but mm -hmm. yeah, cases that maybe mm. somebody comes in an emergency situation mm. and you can't wait for a fasting, you'd have to do the mm. random blood sugar. Mm. But if he checked it mm. and then, or if she checked it, yeah. and then it was above normal, is she, was she in the pre-diabetic state? which I mentioned, which is a 5.7 to about 6.9. Was she really above the 7? Mm. Then that makes it diabetes. But even that, you can't use just fasting blood sugar. 
what we recommend is usually to do an HbA1c which is glycated hemoglobin okay uh -huh. so that helps you to get the exact okay. um, uh, control of of your sugar within your system wow yes no, so this that's, message, mm. I would recommend that she does that and then also she mentioned she had irritations to yeah. her eye. so maybe on our next episode we'll, we'll talk more it. about the complications. Oh, but there's a correlation we'll talk more not irritations to the eye but there's something called diabetic retinopathy mm. so wow. it has something to do with your eye very complicated exactly. disease you are talking yes, about yes incredible multiple organs wow. you know as as, wants as you to know if foamy urine is a sign of diabetes foamy urine not that yeah. i have seen wow. okay. but what i have mentioned is once you have um, excessive urination mm -hmm. the volume is a lot mm. yes that's you can and then also if you have the polyphagia plus the polydipsia, mm. plus you checking your sugar levels, maybe just the fasting, mm. and then you've had the ranges that I have mentioned. Does, does the color seven. of the urine matter? So obviously if you have poly, polyuria, you'd, your, your urine will look colorless. You get it? Yeah. Usually urine color is supposed to be amber color. But then if you do have excessive water, a lot of water entering yes. into it, it will dilute Lutes. the color and you yeah. end up having mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. even close to it. Wow. Somebody yeah. also wants to find out, Nana or Kojidom Adolfi. He says, uh, I understand diabetes is hereditary. Who in the family is more susceptible to inherit the sickness? Okay, so once it's hereditary, yes. If you have a first family line, mm. let's say your mom or your dad, mm. yes, the likelihood is that you may end up getting it. You, or you stand a, a greater chance of mm. inheriting some of these genes mm. that can end up predisposing you to getting diabetes. Mm. So for the type 1, yes, it has a very strong genetic predisposition, which you need to screen for it and then make sure that um, you are doing all the lifestyle modifications to help you or, or, or actually reduce your risk of developing diabetes. And then also, if it is type 2, Type 2 has a lot to do with lifestyle. It has a lot to do with lifestyle. So you need to make sure that you are keeping active. The, all the things that we spoke about, I think, some, some weeks ago. You are keeping active. You are keeping your weight at um, not overweight or obese, at the obese levels. And then make sure that you are taking a lot of fruits and vegetables. All of these will reduce your risk of developing Wow. Diabetes. I feel like we've not we've diabetes. not we've not even <laughs> finished like the tip of this whole conversation. Yeah, there's many questions coming yeah. in. Uh, this one, I have diabetes. My sugar level was 19.0, mm. but now 6.5, and swelling foot. What should I do to bring down my swelling foot? Okay, Benjamin Owusu. So, that so. Um, what I would want to find out from this patient is that um, since they said they were 19, which is very high, and then now six, that's good. That's good. At least they are. Is it was it was it diagnosed in the hospital and I'm sure he's being managed accordingly. So what he can do for the swollen foot is does it he should try and then pass his finger on it and then see if it's indents, then it means that it is the pedal edema that we are talking about. But there should be something. Why is it it's not only diabetes that can predispose you to death. Could be some kidney malfunction. So he should quickly go back to the hospital and then let us um, examine it examine thoroughly it. and then get to the root of it. Oh. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, it's been an interesting conversation. I yeah. hope uh, and a scary the way you're smiling. And, yeah, and, so, and, so, and, so, and so a scary, so and a scary one. I will like. The sugary and fizzy drinks that you consume on a daily I don't know what she's about to do all of this. But, <laughs> but 